you there. Rush hour traffic in Tirana. Here in the capital of Albania. March 11th. There is definitely a feeling of spring in the air. A nice sunny day. I've been here for a week now. I've been holed up editing videos from my trip to Italy. So uh, finally getting out to make a uh, proper tour of Tirana here. This is my first time here. My second time to Albania. But I skipped Tirana on that trip. So I've just been uh, kind of hanging out in my hotel room for the past week, working away. The uh, weather was a lot cloudier, colder, wetter. So it is perfect that it uh, got nice and sunny today. I can't say that I know the city well by any means. Over the past week I have been staying indoors, but I've walked around a fair amount and kind of gotten just a feel for the uh, city and it is interesting. Very lively, lots of people out and about, lots of nice restaurants. They got bike lanes, which I'm walking in at the moment, but it's a crowded sidewalk. So I'm walking over to Skanderbeg Square, the main square. Check out the uh, beautiful snowy mountains. Fresh snow on there probably from the rains here. And then I will uh, do my best to show what I can of this little known capital city. For the afternoon, tomorrow I am taking off, heading north. to see a little bit more of Albania before I head next to Kosovo, so, or Kosova, I think it is. Not sure how well you can see there, but that image there is a double-headed eagle it is on the Albanian flag. It represents the sovereign country of Albania, which gained its independence from the Ottoman Empire in 1912. So this is Skanderbeg Square. There you can see the Albanian flag with the same double-headed eagle. Massive square here. And this is Skanderbeg on the horse. A 15th century military commander and hero of the country of Albania who fought against the Ottoman Empire. So the Ottoman Empire dominated this part of the world the entire Balkans, including Greece, at one time or another, and so that has impacted the history of Albania and the other Balkan countries. So it has been a centuries-long struggle against the Ottomans. As I mentioned, Albania didn't gain its independence until 1912 from the Ottoman Empire, so 400 years later after Skanderbeg was fighting against them. And then Tirana became the capital in 1920. Albania became communist, along with the other Balkan countries, of course, they were unified as Yugoslavia, not Albania, but Albanian communism fell at the same time that the Soviet Union broke apart and Yugoslavia 
communism just kind of collapsed at that time in general. So in 1991, then communism fell in Albania as well. There have been various statues in this uh, same location. Joseph Stalin, Soviet Union leader, and then that was taken down and it was replaced with a statue of Enver Hoxha, who was the communist leader of Albania until 1985, after four decades of being the leader of Albania through its uh, communist era. And then after the fall of communism in 1991, there were protests here in the square by students against the statue of Enver Hoxha, and that was taken down, and then they went back in time to a hero that uh, I guess is more agreed upon as being a hero of Albania, Skanderbeg. All right, let's uh, explore further through this pedestrian zone. Many of the main tourist sites to see are right in this area. So is Tirana worth visiting? Now, everywhere is worth visiting depending on what you're looking for. The question is, what are you looking for? And if you want to have a like beach vacation in Albania, because there are nice beaches here, then perhaps you want to skip Tirana and just go to Duras or Xamo, some of the uh, various beach spots, or smaller towns in the mountains. They're amazing mountain villages. Tirana is the city experience. And it does not have a great deal of spectacular sites, tourist sites to see. Now this is one of them, one of the uh, main mosques in the city, hearkening back of course to the Ottoman occupation. Let's poke inside, looks uh, quite beautiful, 1793. Camera, shoes off, okay. So shoes off, obviously, is not prayer time at the moment. It's okay to uh, poke around. I see. Magnet. I don't have refrigerator. I have nothing, nothing to magnetize it to. And this is uh, yes, Samo. Yes, I was uh, just uh, talking about Samo Beach. Nice, uh, nice beach. Ah, uh, no, thank you. I don't really need uh, any of these. But oh, you have American flag. I'm, I'm, I'm an American. American, yes. <laughs> Uh, Albania. Yes, nice, yeah. uh, beautiful yeah. flag. I like the yeah. strong red, red yeah. and black. Ah, uh, Euros, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I need Lek. I need yeah, Lek, okay. Now yeah. I'm in Albania, so. Lek. Yeah, Lek. Yeah, yeah. I, I see, yes. I, I have, I have Lek, so. Yeah. Good luck. So, the currency of Albania is the Lek. And it is very affordable. As you saw, my room 
a very nice room for 50 bucks with nice fast Wi-Fi. And so depending on your vacation or traveling plans, if you're a flying in to Albania, then most likely you will fly into Tirana, in which case definitely uh, take a day or two to explore around. But if you're coming over from Italy by ferry, for example, or crossing the border from Montenegro, or coming up from Greece, then maybe you just want to check out the beaches and the smaller towns and the mountains and skip the capital, but uh, it is still quite an interesting city. So notice it says there Toptani and here Familia Family Toptani Kala Ye I'm going to guess that that means castle a castle here Tyrannus Tirana so the Toptani family there's a year here 1760 the Toptani family was a powerful family that ruled through the Ottoman Empire here in Albania up until World War II. So they had a very long uh, phase of power. The Fortes, so the fort is a field fortification with a rectangular plan. The preserved construction of some of the towers and the bailey show that the castle might have been built during late antiquity early Byzantine period, 4th to 6th century AD, it might be one of the fortifications built or rebuilt by Emperor Justinian, so Roman Emperor, in the new Epirus. In 1798, the castle was taken by the Toptani family from Kruja. Now, Kruja is a town that I am planning to visit probably tomorrow. So, Albania was also ruled by the Roman Empire, as is the case with all of the countries in this area, then Albania has a very deep and long history of various empires, rulers, wars being taken over by the Romans and the Ottomans and the communists and etc etc down through history so this is inside the castle now transformed into a very nice pedestrian shopping area <laughs> And so the main language of Albania is, of course, Albanian. A unique language that I don't know a word of. I asked somebody how to say hello, and they told me, and it isn't so hard to pronounce. It's kind of difficult, but uh, not impossible, but then remembering it. I don't remember it. So this is the Namazga Mosque. Currently being built. Not yet finished. It will be the largest mosque in the Balkans when completed. 5,000 worshippers will be able to 
worship at the same time. According to the statistics, then, Albania is 60% Muslim and 17% Christian. However, from what I understand, then, Albanians aren't particularly religious. So I've got some coins here for the street musician. Albanian lek, 100 lek. So the exchange rate to the US dollar is pretty close to 100 to 1. So one US dollar is about 100 lek. So that is about a dollar, so two bucks here, 200 lek. So the communist leader Enver Hoxha was very paranoid that somebody was going to attack Albania and so he built all kinds of bunkers all over the country. This is one of those bunkers that has been turned into a tourist attraction. Museum. Bunk Art 2. There is another one just called Bunk Art. Let's go underground, see what this is all about. In memoriam, terrorist communist. Hello. One ticket. It cl closed? Oh, two minutes. I see, okay. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Thank you, thank you. History. Okay. To read, yes, thank you. The ticket person is in the bathroom and is coming back. The tunnel of the Ministry of Internal Affairs was built between 1981 and 1986 and can be considered one of the latest great works carried out by the communist regime within the project of bunkerization which started in the early 70s and led to the building of 175,000 bunkers. Oh my god. That is a lot of bunkers. There were three construction types, mountain sites, buildings, and pits. Like many other bunkers of this size, it was built to withstand a potential chemical and nuclear attack. Actually, the bunker was never even used for training. The Prime Minister Mehmet Shehu, as well as the dictator Enver Hoxha, who ordered its construction, never saw it finished because they both died before the construction of the bunker ended. So I'm in. It is 500 lek, which is about uh, $5 US. And I guess it takes about uh, like 45 minutes to go through the entire thing, so it is big. And so the history of Albania is told in the course of this bunker. The gendarmerie and the police during the monarchy years 1925 to 1939, according to the law, 18th of May 1933, the monarchy's gendarmerie force was divided into the general command, the command of the school of gendarmerie. So, 
what a waste of time and money to uh, build 175,000 bunkers for nothing. February 1991 protests. So, I mentioned that in the main square, which is right nearby. Students in 1991 protesting against the, uh, I guess, the communist regime had fallen, and they were protesting against the uh, statue. There must be something more going on here than just protesting against that statue, but I guess they just showed it. The uh, statue of Enver Hoksha. So I guess they're basically protesting against communism, marked the communist regime fall. And so, 1991, communism fell in Albania. This is a dark and uh, dreary place. Just a absolute maze of passageways and rooms. Ukraine needs one of these. I mean, they got their own bunkers, but uh, this is a pretty hardcore one. communist era, turn it into a weird robot thing. The monster of the dictatorship. We build the socialism by holding the pickaxe in one hand and the rifle in the other. So the bunker isn't actually that extensive. But there are all these rooms with information, history, about the communist era. And so you could spend a lot of time reading. Here you can see 1944 to 1948. Read all about the uh, brutal communist government. Here we are, Tirana. When I was in Albania five years ago, I came down from Montenegro into Škoder, then Berat, Vlore, Xamel, 
Skanderbeg Square. The Bunk Art 2 is just right over there. So we decided to do some random wandering and just show whatever I come across. I come across a very interesting part of town. Some sort of ruins here. And this is all right next to this very modern street right over here. So I don't know what the deal is with... Oh wow, there's like somebody inside that building. Looks like they actually live there. Trippy. Let's see what else we can find wandering around. So Opa is a Greek word and it is a Greek restaurant here in Tirana that I ate at. 
one of the uh, first days that I was here. Electric plug-in, I guess. So here we have the pyramid. It was completed in 1987, two years after the death of Enver Hoxha, as a tribute to him, the communist leader dictator from 1944 until his death in 1985. But then communism fell in 1990, 1991, and they weren't really sure what to do with it anymore since they were no longer revering communist Albania and its leaders. So I guess that is the completed version, what it would look like. It is all blocked off here. So apparently there is a controversy about whether to turn it into a memorial museum remembrance of the communist era or to have it torn down and so they haven't decided what to do with it so it just remains a crumbling building a monument to the so that is going to do it for this uh, video tour of Tirana. I hope it gave you a good idea of whether it is a city worth visiting for you. It is certainly not one of the more picturesque European cities architecturally, but uh, it is definitely an interesting city to walk around. People are cool. It is a nice place to just walk the streets and get a feel for this fairly little known country here in the Balkans. And so from a traveler's perspective, definitely uh, worth a stop for a couple of days or maybe just a few hours to explore the city and then depending on how much time you have, of course, you may want to get out of here and uh, get out to the speech towns and the uh, mountains and national parks, etc. So, uh, thanks for watching, and tomorrow, heading north from here, I will probably show a little bit more of Albania before I head for Kosovo. See ya.